Looks like Super Rejects may be favored, but this has been the tournament where Noble shows that they have so much cooking in the kitchen. They are up to something. They got comps. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what their training regimen is like, but all of a sudden they have been able to just overcome mountains that looked insurmountable to them in the past. What do the Super Rejects have in store for this squad that they've already beaten? It's an elimination match. Championship Sunday starts right now. I hope the Super Rejects have a cure for scurvy because Roasty has entered the battle as a pirate this time around. Last time he was assassination, but I think this pirate specialization is going to be a lot more effective for the team of Noble. Yeah, Roasty's going to be very tanky against this team. Super Rejects is going to have to punish them. Jamili Gorecki, they can sit back. They can play it a little bit patiently, just keep up the consistent pressure while Roasty's really makes uh, a lot of plays. He's going to have a lot of stuns with that pistol stun. Going to have the gouges to crowd control Envious as well as the blind. Uh, Super Rejects is going to have to do a great job defensively, and uh, I think they're going to be up for the task. All right, Roasty's is the immediate target for the Super Rejects as Gorecki had to trade out an Iron Bark early on from the result of Envious stunning Roses in the center of the map. Now Jamili and Roses are trying to lead an attack towards Smexen, reaching his health down to 50%. Smexen jumping back to the pillar for now. Thugonomics firing Chaos Bolts on all cylinders. Roses ducking behind the pillar. This is going to be a bit of a uh, wizard battle as Smexen and Thugonomics, if if the opposing team stands in the open for too long against Thugonomics, they simply die. They can't play in the midfield. Like, for example, right here, Jamili has lost almost half of his health already from just spending a few seconds in the open. So he immediately has to get back to the box and line of sight. And I do expect Roasties and Jamili to try and set up these single target burst moments deeper into dampening, but they need to be careful not to die before that point. Yeah, Roasties using his Cloak of Shadows, and this is what is so scary. This is Apotheosis, but a big swap over on Envious. He already trinketed it out of the blind. Doesn't have another trinket available. Stun into Earthshock. Nice death ball coming in from Thugonomics to keep Envious up. That was a Guardian Spirit, though. That's a big victory there for Noble getting the trinket, getting Guardian Spirit. If they can get one more setup like that, uh, it's going to be very scary for Envious. But Rosis has already used that Plunder Armor. Yeah, Envious has an ability called Fade, which he can immune everything hitting him. So the next time that they set up an attack on him, he's going to have to use that before he gets stunned. So he's going to have to keep his eyes glued onto Rosis as he will be the one to initiate that. Thugonomics firing out some Chaos Bolts. Not really finding too much damage off the back of it just yet. And it does look like they're trying to go after Gorecki. They managed to catch him in a chastise, but not enough damage. Nice mind control pulling Gorecki back into center field. Gorecki immediately displacing back to the pillar, having to hide away from the devastating Thugonomics. Yeah, this is so scary about the compositions that Super Rejects has. Is that Apotheosis, Envious being able to spam out the smites, as well as get out those stuns, keeping anyone from Noble still, so Thugonomics and Smexen can kind of tee off all that damage. But here's another swap over onto Envious. I don't think Jamili's going to be there for any sort of significant damage. Envious is going to be completely fine. Roasty's not able to find uh, any sort of pressure. There's a stun on a Roasty's now. Big pressure. Second trinket coming out of Roasty's now. He could be in big, big trouble. No Cloak of Shadows as well. Big damage connecting from both teams. But you can see Noble completely on the back foot once again. I mean, Super Rejects are dominating right now. I'm not sure if Greg uh -oh. can even handle this. They're choking. Jamili on 5%. Ironbark barely saves him. I know Gorecki loves to play greedy with defensive cooldowns and hold them into the last second, but that was so close. Uh, if another mistake happens like that later, or another greedy play like that happens into dampening, it's just going to be the end of the match. Super Rejects still dominating. Everybody low health. Gorecki trying to sit behind the pillar. Thugonomics getting stunned away as Roasty is just trying to peel for his team, but Smexen is hunting down Jamili in an LE 1v1 on the pillar. Jamili not winning this exchange. He's trying to kite across the map back to Gorecki, but he gets knocked into center field. Thugonomics is lining up a Chaos Bolt. Jamili denies it. Jamili still just trying to retreat away, but Envious Mind Controls him. He could drop it at the end of the Chaos Bolt. No, Chaos Bolt going to be used onto Roasty's instead. Jamili does finally make it back to his healer, Gorecki, but that was a long trek across such a small distance. Yeah, this is, it, it's hard for Noble in this position. Like, if they want to do these hit and run strategies, I feel like that really plays into the advantages Super Rejects have. Anytime Envious, you know, has his Ray of Hope, has his Serenity, has his Chastise, I feel like they're in the winning position. So Noble, I feel like they have to kind of overwhelm with pressure, and that's why I don't really like the rest of Druid in this pick. Stun now over on a Roasties. Smexen looking for some damage. Iron Bark can be maybe saving Roasties here. He has to use the Cloak of Shadows, so no Cloak of Shadows available for him. He does have the Plunder Armor. Uh, I think he has his Blind up as well, so maybe Noble can make an opportunity here. Apotheosis can be used by Envious. He's spamming out the Smites over and over. They want to get aggressive. They want to have those chastise stuns available. Gouge now on the Thugonomics. You can see Gorecki and Jamili looking for some CC, looking for some damage. Nice little swap here over on the Smexen. Hex on to Envious. He gets out of that, though, quite easily. I believe that was the Voodoo Totem. So looks like.
like Smexon's gonna be completely fine. We saw in the European region when Zuniaki played Holy Priest into the Outlaw Ellie, the Outlaw Ellie just switched to him over and over and eventually killed him. So I'm curious if Rosies and Jamili are going to keep to that strategy or if they're just gonna focus on defense and surviving. It was obviously a different composition. He wasn't playing with a Dester Warlock and an Ellie Shaman. He was playing with a Hunter and a Feral. So it could just be more risky to do it. This composition from the Super Reject seems to be well-rounded to deny Noble any aggressive pressure. Jamili trying to line up some burst with Stormkeeper, but not finding too much damage just yet. And Roasties is the one that's feeling the brunt of this exchange as Smexen forces him back. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised. They've been able to keep Roasties at bay for so much of this matchup, not able to get that uptime and crowd control that he really needs. Going to be charging in, blinding up Envious. Envious is going to be happy to sit it right now. Uh, looks like Roasties wants to go for that follow-up sap. Jamili is the one that's in most of the trouble. If you look at Mana, Gorecki at around 50%. Actually going for a drink right now, so this is a good opportunity for Noble to maybe get ahead on Mana. Smexen getting a little bit low, but Envious sitting all of that crowd control. All right, Greki getting feared in the middle of the map as he tried to set up an aggressive play. Now getting stun locked in the open. Ice Fury and Chaos Bolts are flying. Greki Barkskins to deny the kill, immediately retreating back behind the pillar. Rosie's trying to lead the charge for now, stunning up Thugonomics, stealing him away. Mana in favor of Envious. However, later into Dampany, it will become harder to predict who is actually going to win as Russell Druid and Holy Priest both have the best mana regeneration in the game. Uh, Smex is still just lining up damage on Roasty. Stagnos getting gouged away. Roasty's using that tricks of the trade, but an immediate life grip will save Smexen. Chaos Bolt connects. Two million knocks Thugonomics away. It lands a Voodoo Totem to remove that Holy Ward from Envious, so they could make a swap pretty soon to him. I see an Iron Bark used onto Jamili during this stun lock combo from Envious, and he's dangerously low. Immediately retreating back behind the pillar. Now they've caught Roasties out. They're trying to burst him down and force at least a Cloak of Shadows from this exchange. Still targeting down Jamili as well. At this pace, though, I feel like Noble are losing opportunities. There's, there's no real openings for them. Yeah, uh, I feel like the longer they sit back and kind of just wait for, you know, <laughs> hit and runs every 30 seconds, it's not a winning strategy. Envious gets to sit, comfortably sit back, spam smites, man heals, reset all his cooldowns. He's going to be completely fine. You can see Goreki trying to make an offensive push. He actually gets feared. Beautiful fear from Thugonomics. Now Jamili and Rossi's both going to be in trouble. Jamili trinketing wants to get behind the pillar. Doesn't want to take any of that damage from Thugonomics and Smex in here. Rossi's retreating as well. Goreki's on the opposite side of the map. He's going to have to reconnect with his team, but he used to displace offensively, gets in bear, manages to reconnect to both Jamili and Roasties, and once again, Noble completely in a defensive position. Ooh, that was a big Earthshock crit onto Gorecki. Boy. Now Roasties getting stunned in the middle of the map. That's going to be a Trinket Cloak of Shadows. Could have easily gone down at that point. Now Gorecki with no Trinket and Roasties with no Trinket. This is going to be a fragile situation for Noble to keep pushing forward. They've managed to at least tie on mana. Another Voodoo Totem to remove that Holy Ward from Envious. He does currently have Apotheosis activated, which allows him to generate Chastise stuns more frequently, as we see one currently active on Roasties, holding him in position for both Smexen and Thugonomics to free cast. Grecky with a well-timed Iron Park, though, deflected a lot of that damage. Jamili healing himself behind the pillar with Healing Surge, trying to be self-sufficient, so Grecky doesn't need to spend so much mana, but a Rain of Fire from Thugonomics is forcing Jamili and Grecky to reposition away from the pillar, which could allow Smexen some opportunity to capitalize on damage, but they do finally set up a swap on Envious, immediately get the Trinket Fade. These are the kind of swaps that I want to see from the team of Noble. Yeah, that's exactly what they need to do. And now Rossi just set himself up in a beautiful position where he still has the Plunder Armor available to take down Envious. If they get a big swap over onto Envious, no Trinket available, they can. It's going to be really up to Thugonomics and Smexen to keep him alive. If they don't peel like crazy, it's going to be very scary for Envious in that spot. We're at around 20% dampening right now. Envious still slight mana lead. I think it's unlikely Greg he's going to be able to find a drink in this matchup against the Ellie Shaman and the Destro Warlock. Uh, but maybe. Um, this has just, once again, gone into kind of a stalemate where Noble is behind the pillar. They're just going to be looking for a reset, looking for some damage. Envious probably realizing he's going to be in trouble, going to be playing very, very safely. Yeah, I'm w I want to see if Jamili, Roasties, and Gorecki can triple crowd control and swap to Envious. There's the stun lock on Wonder. Envious, but they need to deny the fears. Gorecki denies the fears with a bash. A wincher on Smexen to deny the heals. Envious could easily fall if they time another stun, but they don't have it. Guardian is going to save Envious. He'll easily recover. Now Gorecki and Jamili will be on the back foot from this aggressive push. They spent just even a matter of seconds in the open and had to use almost their entire defensive arsenal to deal with the pressure from Thugonomics. Yeah, they just didn't have the follow-up damage for Envious. Didn't have the Earthshocks done. Guardian was easily traded out, and Envious can be completely fine. Now Smexen taking a little bit of damage. You can see Jamili casting out the Ice Fury, but unfortunately Smexen's going to be line of sighting that. Completely fine. Smexen casts out the Stormkeeper looking for that thunder damage on all three members of Noble. There's a stun on Agarecki once again. Rossi's going to be charging in, looking for the blind on the enemy. It's actually just a full blind. Maybe an opportunity here for Noble to find some damage, but Thugonomics is going to be using that unending resolve 
as a, sort of a, an offense right here. Actually, maybe looking to just stop the, some of this damage that's uh -oh. incoming. Big burst coming in from both Jamili and Roasties. Tricks of the trade from that outlaw rogue makes that elemental shaman so strong. See a double immortal coil from Thugonomics. This is when he really wants to get his damage rolling, but Smexen shuts him down with the wind shear and a voodoo totem. That was really good peels from Smexen during the highest burst potential for Thugonomics. Gorecki just quivering behind the pillar as dampening starts to ramp up higher and higher. His hots aren't going to be enough to sustain his team. He gets caught in the open. He is in bear form, though, predicting that he would get stunned crossing the map. That was a smart decision, but a chaos bolt still connects. He's low. Jamelia is low. There's an iron bark available, but he's got two targets at low health. He's got to make a decision. Who is he going to use it on? He needs to make the decision soon. He's on 10% health. Jamili's trying to support, but now they're both caught into a cap totem stun. Smexen is just laying waste with the Stormkeeper uh -oh. chain lightnings. Grecky's forced his hand. He's going to have to use Iron Bark on himself, but he gets knocked into the open. Now there's no Iron Bark for Jamili. Astral Shift is available, but you cannot use it in a stun. And Super Rejects locked Grecky into a check. Have a full Maelstrom so he can get that Earth Shock stun, that big Earth Shock, as well as those uh, big Frost Shocks. So they have a lot of damage here and they're preparing to set up that swap onto Envious, who is standing right here in the middle of the map. So uh, now we're going to see Roasties kind of move forward there and try to set up a big switch. And this is something that the Outlaw Rogue can do very easily with the Tricks of the Trade. You just gouge up one of the DPS, then you stun the healer, and then here comes Lava Burst, Ice Furies, Tricks of the Trade, Earth Shock stun. Envious has to guarantee Trinket there and of course use his fate ability which uh, makes every spell miss you so once you have that you have a big kill uh, win condition now because you still have plunder armor and you still have blind so you could easily use a gouge onto uh, envious then leap over to smexin stun him up and then get smexin's trinket that way and then you can follow up that gouge with a bash into maybe a cyclone so if they did that they could definitely blind envious and then plunder smexin and just win the game right away but instead it'd be difficult well it looks like twitch chat likes this new pick 69 percent of you think noble's going to be able to take this second game will they be able to tie it up like you guys think or will super reject be able to make it happen on Dollar and Sewers. I know Rubka was actually practicing Warrior yesterday on stream with Gorecki, so I'm not sure if this is literally a one day pickup or it's something they've been uh, building in the long run. We have to see how well Rubka can perform on this Warrior role. We know him more historically for Holy Paladin, so this is definitely going to be a treat. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Jamili already trinketing out of that Hammer of Justice. Nice pressure coming in from Super Rejects very early on. See, Astral Shift as well, so Super Rejects uh, managing to find some damage here. Rub Cub trying to reconnect to his target, get some pressure over onto Envious. I think he's in Battle Stance right now. He's going to be switching over into these stances. He has been taking a little bit of pressure. Gorecki having to play catch up at this point of the game, but both Envious and Thugonama is going to be rotting down. Yep, Envious with Crusade currently rolling, so his damage is currently maximum capacity right now. He's got a couple more seconds of it. Maybe they can burst down Jamili. Grecky tries to deflect with an Iron Bark, but that's two Chaos Bolts Ugh. and a ton of damage to follow it up. Jamili trying to duck down below in line of sight. The Economics Envious not going to be chasing after him. Immediately going back to the Warrior, but Rub Cub does not want to leave that opening. He's just going to leap away, denying the further burst from Thugonomics. Another Chaos Bolt being lined up. Spell Reflect from Rub Cub. A second too late, though. Chaos Bolt does connect. Rub Cub is dangerously low. Grecky trying to pick him back up. Surprisingly, Envious and Thugonomics have decent pressure. I was expecting this to be actually a bit more one-sided for Noble. Yeah, I think it's just because of the smaller map, and that's why it was an intelligent pick there by Super Reject, knowing Envious can land onto at least one target. And what's really scary for Gorecki is that one, at any moment in this game, we know Cole likes to play super aggressive. He can go all in with those offensive purges if they do manage to find that sort of pressure. Thugonomics now trying to land a Chaos Bolt over on a Rub Cub gets interrupted. Hammer of Justice actually gets trinketed. That was a nice um, spell lock on a Gorecki and the Hammer of Justice on Rub Cub. So that was good coordination there by Super Rejects. Definitely Thugonomics trying to kite Rub Cub behind the waterfall and out of line side of Gorecki. But the one advantage of being a healer and then switching to the DPS role is that you know what you hate from your DPS player. So if Rub Cub just kept running behind the waterfall and lining side of Gorecki, he can recognize immediately, hey, I'm leaving my healer behind. I can't do that. That's a bad decision. And that's an advantage he's going to have as a healer switching to the DPS role. I would say potentially where he may be lacking is execute power. That's kind of uh, a cheeky playoff in being a warrior, but usually a healer switching to DPS, they might not be the, the playmaker. They might not know the best way to navigate to a kill, but luckily they've got Jamili on their team to try and round that out. And of course, Thundercleave is a very defensive oriented comp. We can see Rub Cub just immediately retreating away as they are just looking to negate Envious's crusade. 
Broke up now charging back in on the Thugonomics. Colo making a smart move. Whenever Noble retreats away like that as three players, he should drink and retain full mana. I feel like the win condition for Super Rejects is a deep dampening game with spam purge on the warrior with Cry. Uh oh! Karekia has uh -oh. already. The spell lock! Dangerously low. A trinket into another stun could not be enough. Iron Bark from Gareki with the die by the sword will. If this moment happens in dampening again, Rub Cub gets deleted. Yep, I, I think you're absolutely right. If Super Rejects can play this cool, Colo can have enough mana for that all-in purge strategy. It's going to be very deadly for Gorecki to deal with. No Iron Bark available, no bot Dive of the Sword available for Rub Cub, so this is such a scary mo moment for Noble. I mean, this composition theoretically should give them a huge advantage, but it just seems like they don't know exactly which strategy they should be implementing to actually find their win condition. And, you know, Super Rejects, you know, this is a composition they've played so often. They know what they do need to do to win. All right, Thugonomics trinketing out, looking for a Chaos Bolt off back of that Hex. It's going right for Jamili. Half his health gone instantly, jumping back down below line of sighting. He will be able to top off. Kolo doing a good job maintaining his mana on parity with Gorecki. That's going to be difficult to do as a Shaman versus a Druid. He needs to keep his eye on that. Another spell lock landed onto Gorecki. These spell locks are the game-winning plays from Thugonomics. Gorecki blinks in to stun up Thugonomics, denying the Chaos Bolt. Envious trying to punish with a swap over to him, but immediately retreats back away. Envious forced to attack the Warrior. This is exactly what Rub Cub wants. He can put Ren on three players, Mortal Strike onto two. He can do maximum damage while basically taking no damage on his own team. This is perfect positioning for Noble right now. Yeah, Rub Cub with a nice triple fear as well. Thugonomics using that on any resolve, looking for the Chaos Bolt. Nike's Nocto by Jamil is going to send him flying away, and he's going to lose that opportunity to get off that damage. And like you said, them being grouped up behind the boxes isn't ideal. Rub Cub's going to be able to get out good cleave damage. Jamil is going to be able to get out those earthquakes as well. Thugonomics once again looking for the bolt, and it's going to really be up to Rub Cub and Jamili to be super destroyed disruptive on a Thugonomics. And like we saw, Gorecki as well, he's willing to displace in and get those bashes. There's a Hodge over onto Rub Cub. Iron Bark actually going to be committed to Rub Cub in this situation. Thugonomics using that Chaos Bolt onto Jamillion. One interesting thing about Thugonomics is he actually uses Focus Chaos Bolt, so sometimes you won't actually know who he's casting on. It can really confuse his opponent. So that's one thing he does that's very intelligent. All right, Thugonomics looking to try and bait some interrupts. He baits the Pummel on a Fear and then lands a Chaos Bolt onto Jamillion, but Jamillion actually made an aggressive push here and landed a full hex onto Colo, crowd controlling the healer and allowing them to build some momentum on Envious and Thugonomics. This is the first time in the game really where Noble have momentum. I'm curious to see how Colo wants to deflect this. He has a lot in his arsenal. He doesn't even need to use it. He's just going to be greedy and hold on oh. to it. Envious getting knocked away on the Crusade. That's not going to be a feels good moment for <laughs> Envious at all. He's going to be losing a ton of damage as a result of that thunderstorm. Yeah, definitely feels bad, man, on that for the Rep Pally. But uh, you can see all Noble wants to do right now is stall it out. They don't want to allow Envious to build up any sort of pressure and momentum. Rub Cub's going to be charging in again. It gets deflected by the Earthen Shield Totem. Thugonomics is going to be taking a little bit of damage. That's the Unending Resolve and the Earthen Shield Totem coming in from Super Reject. So maybe an opportunity here for Noble, but a big Chaos Bolt being cast out onto Rub Cub. Ugh. He fakes out the Spell Reflect, manages to land the second one. Nice Hex from Jamili. I actually think it was a Reflected Hex uh, on Nicolo. So nice job by Rub Cub, I should say. Dampening now at around 5%. Colo 100% mana. Gorecki a little bit behind. And I think what Super Rejects is doing, like we said, very intelligent. If they can stall out the game, eventually their damage will be significant enough with the offensive purges that Gorecki will eventually fall behind. Yeah, they need dampening to kill the warrior through defensive stance, and they can purge off the rest of Druid heal over time effects, and that's basically the win condition. The Elemental Shaman is too slippery. The rest of Druid is a little bit too slippery as well. It's too difficult to punish them, but the warrior, he's an open target, so if they can set up on him, he's in currently in battle stance. Envious may want to push off the pillar. Maybe they're just going to wait for Crusade. I mean, the next push could even be a game-winning one or one where they get Die by the Sword. If they can get Die by the Sword from Rub Cub within maybe the next minute to a minute and a half, they can win a game, win the game a minute and a half further from that point. So right now, they're just focusing a lot on Jamili, which I feel is a bit of a mistake unless they're trying to bait an Iron Bark. Colo caught into a, a Fear at the moment, but sanctuaried out immediately by Envious. Both teams just so durable with this utility and support on either side. The Elemental Shaman bringing a lot of off-healing. The Rep Paladin bringing Stun and Fear Breaks. We see Rub Cub trying to get something going here on Thugonomics. Sharpened Blade activated, bursting him down to about half HP. On any resolve was traded out for Thugonomics, so he may need to be careful moving forward as Dampening begins to mount. Yeah, Colo. 100% mana still. Noble is struggling to find that win condition. I don't actually think they're going to win the game if it goes on too late. Crusade's going to be stacking up by Envious. Rub Cub just leaps away once again. Noble does not want to mess with Super Rejects when they have those offensive cooldowns available. And Envious seems to be happy 
I, I, I suppose with this. He's not going to be charging in, not going to be getting overly aggressive, not giving up that positional advantage. He knows if the game goes on late enough, Gorecki's really going to struggle. Oh. Hammer of Justice onto Rub Cub. Doug and looking for the Chaos Bolt, but a nice win shear there from Jamili. Rub Cub still getting low. Chaos Bolt's going to deflect Jamili as well, forcing him to retreat behind the pillar. Yeah, they really needed to at least get an iron bark from that hammer of justice on Rubka, but they don't find that either, which means they're not really creating openings for themselves as we move deeper into dampening, and the instant cast damage from the Shaman and Warriors can be much more effective on the Rep Paladin than the Destruction Warlocks will be onto them. So I'm curious, MVS getting knocked away by Jamili again, just completely taking advantage of the map. Thugonomics looking for a Chaos Bolt, trying to fake cast the interrupts. Kolo with a well-placed Earthen Shield Totem is protecting both players, though, so Thugonomics should be able to just tear it up here on the corner, trying to line a sight and drag Rub Cub into a bad position. Chaos Bolt's flying, Spell Reflect, well-timed there by Rub Cub. Straight back to Thugonomics. A Spell Lock was landed onto Gorecki. They could develop some momentum off the back of this. Blood Off Silence onto Jamili, trying to hold him in place, prevent a gust of wind. Not really going to be capitalized on too much damage, though. Thugonomics just spamming fear, Envious retreating away. They really do need that crusade damage from Envious, I think, to penetrate through the defenses of Rub Cub. Well, what ends up happening when you're playing against a Destro Warlock is at 50% dampening, getting someone to 50% health with one Chaos Bolt ends up being pretty much an un... In like, you can't recover from that situation. So Thugonomics' team, they're playing intelligent. They know if they can just stall this out, eventually they'll get a Chaos Bolt off, and Gorecki's going to really struggle to heal through that pressure. And if they do end up retreating behind the pillow, that's where an Envious can get off all that cleave damage with the Crusade, and I don't know. It's going to be such a scary moment, especially if Envious still has the Bubble, the Blessing, the Protection, they have Spirit Link, they have Astral Shift. They have all these sort of all-in abilities. Uh, Super Rejects is going to be able to find a huge amount pressure. Yeah, that's true. If Envious and Colo can maintain maximum mana and all their defensive cooldowns, they might be able to just steamroll onto the pillar where Gorecki is standing and just push them down. See Envious with Crusade currently active, and at 26% dampening, it's a lot more devastating. Rub Cup forced to heroic leap away, and this Ooh. is the push that I was waiting for deeper into dampening. They've stacked up for Envious. He's going to be doing a ton of damage, but he's going to get counter pressured equally at the same time. It's a race to the finish here as Dampany starts to mount higher and higher. Rub Cub's still the primary target. Is reluctantly not trading out any major defensive cooldowns for this assault. This is not looking too good for Envious. He really needed to get an Iron Bark or a die by the sword with this Crusade. They're not finding it. Luckily, though, Colo didn't spend too much mana purging in this attempt. Rub Cub's still the primary target moving forward, though. Yeah, I actually don't think this is the moment that Super Rejects needs to pick. I think you wait till 50% dampening when it becomes even <laughs> more difficult for Noble to deal with. So I, I like the fact that Colo didn't go all in at that point. I think Noble was going to be fine with the way they were positioned and how they were handling it. There's a nice defensive fear coming in from Rub Cub. Once again, Rub Cub not able to push in, not able to find the damage. Thugonomics is going to be able to play Goalkeeper, spamming out Chaos Bolts and what, whatever, what have you. <laughs> Battle Stance going to be activated for Rub Cub as he looks for some damage on the Thugonomics. Incinerates. Yeah, incinerates. All those different spells that the Destro Warlock has. That's the Unending Resolve and the Earthen Shield Totem. This could be a moment for Noble to push in and actually find some more pressure on the Thugonomics, but they're choosing not to. They just want to pull back. I mean, Rub Cub's now finally charging forward. Jamili's got a Stormkeeper lined up, tossing out some Lightning Bolts towards Envious. Hammer of Justice on Rub Cub. Maybe trying to bait a dispel from Gorecki. He's, he finally has to use Iron Bark. Okay, now we're getting at a point where Rub Cub could be isolated. The next attempt could be Die by the Sword, and after that, really nothing. Envious just needs to hold on to his Divine Shield. Nice Cyclone at low HP, denying the Crusade from building up any further. And uh, keeping him at low health, Cole's going to have to time some heals out of that. He's not finding them just yet. His dampening is at 36%. I think this is when we need to start taking our bets on dampening. I think I'm leaning at 55%. 55%? Uh, I think that's a solid that's a choice. Boy, though. I think it's a solid choice. Jamili's going to get interrupted. Gorecki now activating his uh, artifact. Wants to top off Rub Cub and Jamili. They look to be making an offensive push here. The Crusade's going to be activated for Envious, looking for a lot of damage on a Rub Cub. And the thing about the Warrior is, although they're very tanky, it's also difficult for them to get away. So those all-ins from Super Rejects could easily just be on Rub Cub later on in the game. We don't know if Rub Cub has the most experience, so it's going to be really up to him to see how he handles that kind of pressure. Oh, and it's happening right now. How's Rub Cub going to deal with it with Dampening now at 40%? Just opting to retreat away, but Envious is all over him. There's a lot of damage. Spell Reflect, Die by the Sword, finally forced from Rub Cub. And as we get deeper into dampening, that cooldown is not going to be available for it. Thugonomics was trying to set up a swap, though, with the Chaos Bolt. Gets bashed away nice. by Gorecki, but now potentially get feared. Thugonomics getting stunned on the Trinket. Rub Cub trying to protect his healer, but Chaos Bolts are flying. Rub Cub leaps out of line of sight. Nice knockback on Thugonomics. Rub Cub and Jamili both dangerously low. Envious all on top of Jamili. 
Rubco trying to move forward to snare him, trying to slow down the pressure, but getting a hammer of justice. We're moving deeper into Dampany. It's become more difficult. Colo saved all of his mana for this moment. He's still got half of it left in the tank. He's going to match oh, up no. and take him down. It. Super Rejects <laughs> now leading the series 2 to O. Oh. And that's what happens. They got to that place where those Chaos Bolts were really scary. Jamili just came in clutch so many times, actually did get those thunderstorms at key moments. Also, we did see Gorecki being an absolute goat with those bashes, but not too many off storm bolts, things like that. So ultimately... Thunder, and now they're trying their main comp, essentially, which is uh, the Fire Mage Assassination Rogue. Uh, I don't think it's a terrible matchup. They could kill the Red Paladin, but we'll have to see. They have to do it here as well. Back Backs against the wall. If they lose, they are out of the tournament, and Super Rejects guarantee themselves that top third placing. And yeah, Noble going back to the composition that they did so phenomenally with in the spring finals earlier this year. Let's see if it can perform here against the Super Rejects. Sap on Envious, Hammer just is on to Colo. I believe maybe Imp is being played from Thugonomics and he was able to dispel it. Yes, he is playing Imp, so that's a nice adaptation for the Thugonomics. He can preemptively remove crowd control from his healer. We see a blind immediate trinket from Colo. Good exchange of cooldown so far from Super Rejects and Jamili is falling behind as a result of a fear on Rubcub. Rubcub does ultimately though reconnect with the Avenging Crusader, leading the charge to full poly. It's instantly dispelled and this is going to be so annoying for Jamili to deal with that Imp from Thugonomics. Yeah, kidney shot on Thugonomics with a spell lock on Nicole into a DR polymorph. Some pressure here for Noble. That's going to force out the unending resolve. Hammer of Justice on Cole as well. That gets it it's sanked out by Envious. So good job by Envious with that Retribution Paladin uh, utility. Jamili's going to be taking a little bit of damage in the meantime. Rossi's uh, looking like he wants to retreat over to Rub Cub. I'm not sure well, why. The imp is over there, I think. It's, oh, okay. it's hiding under the gateway. It's a small imp. Jamili under fire, though, with good cross CC from Super Rejects. This could be the Cauterize with the full fear secured. Rub Cub with a sacrifice will redirect the damage and deny it. Roasty's now dipping low as Envious switches his attention over to him. Jamili setting up a defensive Ring of Frost there, looking for a Polymorph, maybe trying to bait the Dispel preemptively, but that Imp Dispel is still available for Thugonomics. Even if Jamili lands this Polymorph, they're gonna need a little bit more than just one Poly, and it looks like he might be able to get, there's Hammer of Justice. Doesn't look like they wanna use the Imp. They do use the Imp Dispel on that, which means Jamili can sneak in a Polymorph for a couple of seconds, but he needs to get it quick. Uh -oh. The longer that it takes, the further he's gonna be falling behind, but they're just not able to find it. There's too much denial from the team of the Super Rejects. He blinks in, he lands the Poly. Good cross CC. Thugonomics finally isolated, but Jamili is the one taking the damage. He could easily be forced into that Cauterize range. This is match point for Noble. Ice Block has been forced, and the Super Rejects are dominating with this Demon specialization for Thugonomics with the Imp just dispelling all the crowd control from the mage and denying any openings from Noble. Yeah, the problem is Rub Cub just has no healing outside of that Avenging Crusader. Once that fades, it's so easy for Super Rejects to find the damage on Jamili and Roasties and force them in a defensive position. As this composition, Fire Mage, Holy Pally, Assassination Rogue, you want to be overwhelming your opponents with crowd control. Looks like they're going to be pushing in, trying to find some CC over on Nicola right now. Also, just getting a little bit of damage on Nicola. Maybe they're opting to change up their target here, but Earthen Shield Totem's dropped on that kidney shot. Sacrifice that's used. The Thugonom is casting out a Chaos Bolt that forces out the Cloak of Shadows and immediately Noble Force Defensive once again. Yeah, I mean, unless they can kill the Ooh. Imp, I'm not sure if they're going to really be able to ever land Crowd Control. There's a Polymorph finally secured onto Colo with a nice counter spell onto Thugonom. They have to 100 him, but there's really not enough damage to get too much going. I'm surprised to not see Vendetta used during that attempt. They do manage to finally pull on any result, but that was an aggressive one to look for a fear on Rub Cub. Unfortunately, it breaks. Now they're swapping to Colo. I think this is a better decision with the Imp to go after the healer. They get an Astral Shift. colo has been playing in the middle of the map basically the whole game, so this is a nice opportunity for them to punish, but in the meantime, Rub Cub had to trade out Divine Shield and Noble fall even further behind. Yeah, Cole's going to be able to top himself off. Polymorph on to NVS. Jamili's doing everything he can defensive at this point. Chaos Bolt's going to connect, but he should be okay. No bubble, no trinket available for Rub Cub. Here's a Chaos Bolt. What are they going to do to deal with it? Rossi's able to survive using the Abation as well. Rossi's has no defensive cooldowns. Everyone from Noble is super vulnerable at this point in the game. Envious, you can see, has that Avenging Crusader uh, ready to go at this point. Um, so it's going to be scary if he decides to push in and get that hammer just on a Rub Cub. Rub Cub trinketing out. They want to get aggressive. Kidney shot over on a Colo. Earthen Shield Totem going to be committed to slow down some of that damage. And I think with that, Colo is going to be completely fine. I mean, they have a Rep Paladin that can remove stuns. They have an Imp that can remove everything basically on the team of Noble. There's no way they can get Colo locked down long enough to find a kill. And the more time they spend in the open, there's a Chaos Bolt being casted. So this is not looking too good for Noble. Rub, Rub Cub is running out of mana. I think they're running out of time. Now they can even swap to Rub Cub at the end of this Avenging Crusader. A counter spell landed on Nicolo, 
Maybe they can make a swap to him, but Thugonomics peels with a double mortal coil into a full hammer of justice. Chaos Bullet connects. Rubcub, he has the trinket, but he's choosing not to use it. Or, Goodbye. And he's just going to go down. This means Noble will be going home, in my estimation, for them taking the turn. You know, Jamili was a part of, and, and I feel like this squad, they have enough time to, to figure those things out, because if they do, they're going to be absolute wrecking balls. I think they just need better picks straight up uh, quite a bit of the time. But how crazy is it in a series that we saw Rubcub for that top three now, still in the lower bracket. So they are going to play the loser of the next match, which we are going to see. That is the move versus Super Frogs. And I don't think that there has been a secret on the desk that a lot of us think the move has the upper hand here, a very dominant squad. So I'm going to say really quickly,